Right, episode 17. So here we are. Um, I've got a lot of messages of late and emails over the past what, three weeks to do a, a video on Formula One brakes. So let's do it. I had the parts on the shelf and uh, here they are below us. Now I'm not, I can't remember what car they're off, but they're, they're fairly recent. Um, it doesn't matter as always, it doesn't matter at all. It's just uh, to, to display how they're made, the technology, how they work and uh, all that sort of thing, how they differ from your normal road car. Now, the, the, the thing with these is um, probably what not a lot of people realize, they're the, the, the longest item um, in terms of manufacture on Formula One car or the, the, the highest price item um, per weight. So they're, they're quite complex. Um, in terms of what they look like, they're, they're very simple. I mean, these are the pads, these are the, that's the disc, um, simple enough. You, you recognize it uh, from your own car or from race cars or from whatever, motorbikes. Um, but in terms of manufacture, they're up there with, um, you know, aerospace, NASA, totally crazy. So what this video will um, try and cover is the manufacture of them rather than how they work, because we all know how they work. They're, they're brake pads. They squeeze on the, the disc, um, which is this here. Not too exciting, really. But um, just to, to do a brief overlay first. Um, so in a Formula 1 car, it, these can uh, break the car, as you know, from what, 300 kilometers an hour to, to zero in like, I don't know, four seconds. Um, they can operate red hot and they're very lightweight. So that's kind of where the, the comparison ends with a road car compared to a Formula 1 car. Now, the pads are a lot thicker, which we'll get onto in a minute. The disc is kind of similar. Um, anyone that has a has a motorbike or a motorcycle will recognize that it's <clears throat> it's um, mounted on bobbins which are just uh, like torque dowels you know it's it's not mounted in unison with the the, the hub like your your road car which would be a, it should come up here and go across and here and the wheel studs would hold it on this is mounted radially with a with dowels and bolts so this can expand at a different rate to the um the the hope material but again all that's not important um what is important and what i want to cover really uh in depth in this one is how it's made and how the 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 fibers are made now i have to be careful in this episode because i've made or i've been involved in um a project concerning a disc like this for a company I won't um, say and I've also been involved with another company which we'll get on to in a minute but involves um, how the, the carbon fiber filaments are spun or how they're made so let's talk about that let's talk about it now um, so this is made from carbon fiber it's um, Let's just go at these first. So you can see here the layers are um, like a carbon fiber part. They're various layers and they're all stacked and uh, it's a uniform body. Um, this is the same. Now these are all made from full carbon fiber and carbon. So they're called carbon carbon, um, which you'd probably have heard of. Um, now, just a shout out to anyone that's involved with that's a chemical engineer or that is involved with carbon fiber production i'm going to be kind of breezing over some of the terms in this video because just as i said i've been involved with um the production of these the production of a, another process to involve making the fibers so i've got a lot of um nda signed with that and I don't want to go too much into detail. So if there's something wrong or something amiss, that's because I've just chosen to, to, to not um, include it. Now, I have looked over all the notes that I've been working on with these companies, as mentioned, for the last what four years. And 
I'm just going to mention the um, the highlight points of the, the the notes, how things are made, and hopefully that should be enough without me getting in trouble. So <clears throat> the um, the disc is first made of carbon fiber. Now, how you make that? So carbon fiber is made from filaments, which are like um, very thin spider webs, which we'll get onto shortly, but. These filaments are first made from, um, a, let's call it a plastic or a, a synthetic resin, whatever you want to call it, um, called, it's called polyacryl nitrile. Um, now it can be called um, polyvinyl cyanide or PAN, um, which is an abbreviation, but this is basically just a thin strand um, of plastic, let's call it that which is then turned into carbon fiber and made into a fabric and then woven. Now, while it sounds very fancy, um, let's pick a name, what we're going to call it. Let's call it like it's, it's a polyacryl nitrile. Um, let's call it, let's just call it pan for the video because uh, it's just easier to say. Um, so this pan fiber is, it's nothing special. It's, as mentioned, a synthetic resin, and it's a very thin fiber which is made with a, a process. It's it's called. Um, it's like if you can imagine how a spider makes its web. So it comes out of its abdomen um, as a silk, a protein silk, and it's emitted that way, and then it's turned into a web. It's not uh, dissimilar how this is made. Um, now the only one thing which I've studied a lot and which I was on a team of um, of different guys. We studied um, the production of spiders webs, which is in air, as you know, in the atmosphere. So it comes out of the spiders um, abdomen and it meets the air. It changes properties and it can be woven into a web. So that's a protein silk, but this is different in that it is solution spun. Now let's, just cover that quickly um, while we're at it without tearing the brown paper. Um, so the the pan, which is the resin which I mentioned, um, I'm going to call it polyvinyl cyanide because it's that's what I worked with. But it comes as a powder. Uh, let's just uh, imagine this as a glass jar here, and the powder in the bottom, and you've got your solution here so they're both mixed and they're then pumped into another beaker here like this with the tiny little needle this is another solution here so this is mixed up pumped in here with air pressure so the solution comes down around this tube here and comes out this tiny little needle like a, a tiny orifice like a whatever carburet or jet or something even smaller and it um, it hits the solution and it cures so it comes up here like a tiny little web out the solution and it's then wound around a drum here so that's how they collect it now this is a fairly standard process um, not unlike as I said the spider's web where this would be the spider here comes out of its abdomen but instead it uh, goes into the air here now the unusual thing as i said we've done a lot of studies with spiders webs as random and boring as this is um a spider's web when we tested it was seen to be conductive which was unusual and we then did research into flies and the material flies wings is a type of kevlar which as the fly flies through um charged warm humid air it picks up static so the the web is actually attracted to the um the fly so that was pretty uh fairly random or pretty cool but um these are all the sort of things you have to do as a an r d engineer but getting back to how carbon is made you get the idea solutions put in here with the powder it melts 
gets extruded out here into the solution, cures in the solution, and then it's wrapped down a drum. So that's your spun fiber, which is the pan fiber. And it's then taken and knitted into a, like a blanket. Now at this point here, this fiber is nothing special. Um, they make tents from it, they make socks, clothing, all that sort of thing. Um, military vests, all that type of thing. It's not very special, but the conversion to carbon fiber is where it gets its um, amazing properties and why these are so expensive, um, the pads and the disc. And again, excuse the hands, it's a uh, carbon, so it's very black. But this filament then is then taken, it's um, put into a line where it's scanned under microscope for breaks and for flaws, and it is oxidized in air at about 250 degrees and it is then woven into fiber or woven into a uh, woven into a cloth like a like a, a blanket or a fabric um, with the most perfect strands that they could attain from this process it's then cross woven with thinner layers which is like a felt layer and it's compacted into a, a very thin uh, fabric and then cut out into a disc shape which will be this size but a bit bigger here and a bit bigger here for um, to allow for machining afterwards so once that fa that fabric or carbon is um, taken it's stacked in layers again alternating uh, you can probably see the layers actually let me just take this here so you can probably see all the layers there yeah you can so all those little squiggles are a different layer you get the idea um so they're all taken they're compacted um again they're they're oxidized in air at 250 approximately they're squeezed and then they're uh, carbonized or carbonated or converted to carbon whatever term you want to use um there's another term as well what is it called graphite anization um again i don't want to get into too much detail because i know all the terms but i've got nda signed and i don't want to get in trouble but all the layers are compacted in a in a jig with uh, huge pressure and they're put into a furnace so the furnace runs at about a thousand degrees centigrade um and it's it's a uh, what's called a debulk so the, the fibers are all debulked they get pressed together tightly all the air is taken out um argon then is is uh, forced into the furnace to uh under vacuum this is pulled down under vacuum under debulk argon gets uh, forced in just an inert gas and then like a, a hydrocarbon rich grass is forced in um just to to send in more carbon into the uh, interlayers so like this takes ages which is why these are so, so expensive um i can't remember off the top of my head how long it takes but like you're talking weeks um so once these are all in the furnace the gas is in there it gets debulked with the argon um hydrocarbon rich gas is forced in which could be you know methane whatever not going to say um the the carbon atoms then from that gas infuse into the the, the carbon atoms in the uh, the carbon fabric and they all become one unit so that's then taken out and you have a, a break disc um huge amount of energy used time hugely expensive don't ever get mentioned i mean you see these online you've read about them you know the carbon fiber break disc from formula one care here they are but uh they're gigantic cost um just because they take so long to make because the the strands have to be so good the the heat input involved i mean energy it's it's crazy the gas and the quality control so the pads are the same these are just made in uh, sheets 
and they get machined afterwards again you can see the carbon there comes off like it, it is dirty it's um it it's obviously black but um so the the disc is formed at a fairly near net shape and then it's machined afterwards now the great thing about this is it's easily machined which you can see here on the pads so you can see the the cutter radius here uh nothing too special there so if we even get a file and just file this corner here so you can see it's 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 a uh, soft and very dirty but that's a basic rundown on how they're made uh without getting into too much detail on it and <clears throat> comparing the whole thing to spiders webs which are uh, kind of the same um there's also medical machines out there now that will spin protein fibers in the same way which is um the the solution gets charged um i think i'm not sure what, what the polarity is i can't remember um but the the protein solution gets sprayed onto a drum which is charged as well and you end up with a with a protein fiber on the drum which can be used for medical reasons for you know limb rebuilds and cartilage rebuilds all that sort of thing depending on the the um the protein makeup but that is how these um strands were made now if you take a closer look at the disc you've seen these before online so it's nothing special it's about 25 mil wide um it's got cooling vents here as you can see all the way around uh, if we just zoom in there they have been machined afterwards so has the the outside all these holes um these were done these scoops here were done in term in um a time of pressing which are uh, done near net and that's kind of it really but so i've sectioned this here i've cut it here cut it here cuts it very easily it's not you know very hard or tough um even though it operates red hot i think this disc will operate at 1200 degrees centigrade which is like red hot and still perform fine you've often seen the videos um online of a disc being red hot on the front of a front one car and it's you know been totally okay so um let's get on to the the cooling the cooling vents so this disc is off a car and you can see the arrow there right here so this is forward motion and it's on the left hand side so this is the left hand front so cooling air would come in here off like a diffuser or vent in here and um, go around the titanium uh, hub carrier or the hub axle and hub carrier go in here and cool this disc so these channels here one here one here all the way around and they split into three which provides the maximum cooling all the way around out to radial and away into the atmosphere so i've cut this as mentioned here and here so if we lift off this section here we can see what the cooling vents look like so the one cooling vent or area here splits into three just for maximum surface area cooling you can see it there now these ones have been done um again this is a uh, post machined afterwards it machines very easily so this was done and specced on the drawings just with a like a threaded cutter now these are whatever they are but um i know how they are but i can't really say but these are uh, left hand threads so you can probably figure out yourself this is a left hand disc on this side and the right hand disc has right hand threads now this could be just to provide um balance so that both discs are the same and all the airflow is the same across them now this this was done with um cnc machine obviously 
with the helical uh, interpolation on the x, y, and z. Now, I know for a fact it was done with a cutter like this, which is this one here. Now, these can cut um, carbon carbon. They're made by uh, Carmex, so they're uh, just an ISO cutter. So, let's zoom in. Um, you've all seen these if, you've, if you're a machinist. Um, so, these are just a thread milling cutter single point let's call it a single point even though it's not it's a it's a five point but um it goes down and you uh you you screw it up like that to cut a thread so it's not like your standard tap set or whatever where you'd just wind it into a hole the uh, the cnc machine will do all this um this is rotating and it comes up like that in a in a helical interpolation and cuts the thread but that is what <clears throat> cut these threads here now obviously this one is bigger and it's a uh, coolant fed so the coolant goes in there from the main spindle and comes out here in these holes cools these these are cut dry they're not called coolant but you put it in there and it would interpolate all the way out and cut these so the reason for this is just to um increase the surface area for cooling so that's all that is pretty cool so that goes there this one's the same um now i have sanded these a small bit i cut these with the bandsaw but uh you can see it there and again they're uh, diffused out just to uh provide a, a differential and the air to get sucked out but yeah that's the the cooling channels um <clears throat> i don't really think there's anything else uh, to say here again the pads are the same way um these would grip on the disc as you know with uh, the calipers which i'll cover i have one on the shelf i'll cover it soon um there's no um steel backing Again, these don't last that long. Um, there's maximum and minimum um, tolerances. I think from memory on on a low speed track, it's 20, I think it's 28 mil on a low speed track and on a high speed track. No, sorry, I'm wrong. It's 26 mil on a, high, on a low speed track. And on a high speed track, it's 28 mil. Um, so as you can see these are uh, these have been worn on a low speed track yeah 26 on low speed track 28 on a high speed so they will go through about oh, i don't know 20 20 or 25 sets of these um during a race so yeah pretty cool and again a bit of a rant about how the fibers are spun but it's very important i think because um just because i did a lot of research both in medical for protein spinning and in carbon would say um you know the the the, the pan fiber for um motorsport spinning um both dry and solution spun techniques but if you want to follow up those studies you can google all these terms i mean they're 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 well they're well out there but i just have to be a bit careful on what i say because i've got india signed and you don't but um yeah so that's what episode 17 and not one i expected to do but one i got a lot of messages about so hopefully that uh fills in our uh keeps you filled in on uh, how they're made and how they work but um, pretty cool again hugely expensive to make weeks of manufacture time um, weeks of quality control research and all that sort of thing but the basic fiber to start with simple enough you're probably wearing socks that contain it or if you're holding in the summer this year um your tent might be made of the same material but it's after that 
where the, the money comes in um, to produce carbon fiber, carbon carbon um, discs. So I think that uh, covers this episode. Um, in the next one, I'm not sure where we'll go yet. Uh, I still have to do the squirter, but we'll get there. Um, the the piston squirter, it's it's uh, all done, ready to um, ready to post. But um, we'll see. And all these parts, as mentioned, now I haven't put up the the wishbone parts yet, but these will all be available in the buy me a coffee link. Uh, probably I'd say tomorrow after lunchtime. I'm going to put up these for sale because uh, I've got plenty of them. I know about them and, you know, someone else might be able to study them or get a, a kick out of them or even as a display item. They're pretty cool. Um, so these and the wishbone in the buy me coffee link, I'll put it down below. And if you have no interest in these or just like looking at the videos, buy me a coffee. Um, it supports the channel, supports future parts, brown paper, hand cleaner. Um, and if you don't want to do any of that, as I always say, sit back, relax and take it all in. Have a good one and talk soon.